how fast they're going? Oh, about 100 miles an hour. 100 miles an hour? Gee, that's speed. I wish I could get behind the wheel of one of those babies. Ah, uh, you die of heart failure. Someday I'm going to be a race driver. I'll be known as Burnham up Barnes, and you'll be taking pictures of me. That is, if you ever learn to run a camera. Say, I bet I'll be a newsreel cameraman before you're a racing driver. I'll double the bet. We got three minutes to get back to work. We're practically there. Come on. qualifying lap before the big race. Can't you ever be serious?
lady. Don't you know it's against the rules to park the body on this track? I'm sorry, sir. I'll never let it happen again. Put your head on his shoulder, miss. Hold her closer, Barnes. If you don't stop trying to make a hero out of me, I'll wrap that camera around your neck. The Barnes fighting face. Hold it. Say, you're here to photograph the race, not me. Well, I'm going to shoot it from here. You won't get any real thrill seeing from where you are. The place you want to be is a death curve. We tried to get there, but the guard wouldn't let anybody near it. Listen, I think I can fix it. Hop in your car and I'll meet you over there. Come on. Hey, I thought I told you to stay out of here. Who, me? Yes, you. Now clear out. Mr. Barnes. Get going, I told you. Duck out of here, Bobby. It's a dangerous place. Oh, gee, George, I want to stay with you. All right. But if any of those cars start for the fence, get out of here as quick as you can. <laughs> that goes for you, too. <laughs> How's the king of the dirt tracks? Okay, chump. I mean, champ. All right, boys, it's 150 laps. you here. I forced Jones into the skid. No, no, you didn't. You were in the clear when Jones lost control of his car. 
If I hadn't forced my way past him, it never would have happened. Oh, forget it. It's all in the game. Game? I'm through with it. I'll never drive another race. Oh, yes, you will. You'll be the greatest champ of them all. Ooh. If you kindly keep an eye on Bobby. Don't talk like that, George. You're not going to die. You can't die. Just leave me. You can't die. I I'm all washed up, kid. <laughs> Burn him up a look after you. You can, you can use Bobby's college money for... <laughs> Don't worry about Bobby. I'll take care of him, George. Thanks. I know you would. George. George, don't leave me. George. Oh. <laughs> oh, gee, burn him up. Why can't I quit school and go to work? Lots of kids do. Because George wanted you to get an education. Yeah, but if you take care of me much longer, you'll be broke. <laughs> Don't worry. I'll find some business to go into pretty soon. Hey, what's the matter for you? What are you going to step in your heart and push him by? You don't understand it in English. That's not impossible. Against the law to park a bus on the highway? And don't you know a gentleman never drops a lady? I've been wanting to see you about that. Here, Bobby, take the wheel. Move over. I'd like to apologize. I haven't seen you around the track lately. Where have you been? I've seen enough race driving. I'm going into business as soon as I can find something in the automobile line. Well, take my advice and stay out of it. <laughs> I think this is fun. What fun? Same train like right this. Well, you wouldn't think it was so much fun if you were trying to hang on to a school contract with a rickety old bus like that. Say, you're not the Temple Transportation Company, are you? What's left of it? What you need is a partner. Where could I find one? I know, just the man. My business is awfully sick. Shake hands with Dr. Barnes. Unless you look a grand. Fit for a king, eh? Oh, well, anyway, for a queen. <laughs> well, Doctor, you've certainly done wonders with your patience. We haven't even started yet, Marjorie. Why, in no time, we'll have ten buses. Big ones. We'll be carrying all the children in the country to school. And then we'll branch out. Sure, we'll have buses with beds in them. You know, the kind that go from here to New York. Ain't that right, Tony? You bet you my life. There's the phone. Uh, uh, Hello? This is Temple's Garage speaking. Uh, just one minute, I will call her. Now, don't go away. It's for you, Miss Marjorie. Hello? Oh, yes, Mr. Drummond. About that land of yours, Miss Temple. If you're going to accept my offer, I'll have to know today. Well, I'm sorry, Mr. Drummond, but I've changed my mind about selling the land. 
Yes, I know, but I don't need the money now. I've taken a partner. Well, I wish you both luck. By the way, who is your partner? Burnham up Barnes. Oh, I, I was wondering what had become of him. Well, I'm glad everything's turned out all right for you. Goodbye. Drummond, I've got to have that land. There's millions of dollars worth of oil under it. Don't worry, Mr. Warren. I'll make her an offer she can't refuse. You'll do nothing of the kind. Barnes is pretty smart and it gets suspicious right away. No, there's, there's only one thing to do. Put them out of business so that she'll have to sell her land. That's easy. If something happened to their bus, they'd lose the school contract, wouldn't they? I don't like this job. Monkeying with a school bus is bad business. You've got nothing to worry about if you do exactly as I told you. You better get moving. Barnes should be at the school by now. Everything worked out all right. Barnes tried to collect damages from Ed for wrecking the bus. <laughs> but you know Ed. He's broke. Yeah, the school board closed down on him this morning. Gave them three days to get a new bus or lose their contract. The only way they can raise money now is for Miss Temple to sell her land. Hey, boss. Burn him up. Barnes is out on the track. Just a minute. He's trying to get a car to drive in the big race. Pass the word down the line that Barnes is not to get a car. OK. Right. Hello, Mr. Warren. I heard it. Get over and see Miss Temple right away. Close the deal for the land before Barnes gets back there. Here he comes now. See you later. Hello, Burnham Up. Where have you been keeping yourself? Going to get back in the racing game? Yes, if I can still get a car. How about your old 25? Uh, I'm sorry, old man, but I've already got a driver. I wish I'd known. There's nobody I'd rather have than you. Thanks, Tom. I'll see some of the other boys. Maybe there's still a chance. So long. So long. Say, your old racing car's for sale down the Star Garage. We could use my college money to pay for it. Nothing doing, Bobby. Your brother put that money in the bank to send you to college, and that's all it's going to be used for.
Hello, Jones. How's your arm? Getting better, thanks. Going to be able to drive in the race? No. How about letting me take your car? I'm sorry, Barnes, but uh, I've made other arrangements. Can't you call the deal off? I can win with your car. We'll split the prize money. I'm sorry, I can't do it. I won't take no for an answer. Who'd you make the deal with? I'll talk him out of it. Now, there's no use talking, Barnes. The deal is set, and that's that. I don't doubt you've got the money in the bank, Sonny, but I can't do business with you. Well, the car's all right, isn't it? Absolutely. She's been all tuned up since I bought her off Burnham Up. Well, then why can't but I? But there's no use talking. I can't take your money. Of course, you know your own business, Miss Temple. But if you're depending upon Barnes winning the big race to save your school contract, you're going to be disappointed. But he's the best race driver in the world. I quite agree with you, but he can't race without a car. You mean he isn't going to get one? He hasn't got a chance. Well, in that case, Mr. Drummond, I guess there's nothing else for me to do but sell you my land. Don't do that, Miss Marjorie. Your father, he tell me, Tony, Whatever you do, don't let the Marge sell that land. It's going to be with lots of money. Well, I can't help myself, Tony. I've got to. Senorina, I beg of you, don't. Please, Tony, this is my business. You better go out and fix that tire now. Huh. Then it's a deal? Yes. If you make out the papers, I'll sign them. She's going to sell the land. Oh, please, I found a letter. Marjorie, wait. Did you get a car? No, but... Oh. Uh, then I've got to sell. But, Margie, you'll have nothing left. I'd rather see the Temple and Barnes Transportation Company go out of business. Well, maybe I'd better come back later. No, Mr. Drummond, I've made up my mind. Marjorie, please. I'm doing this. Here you are, Burnham Up! Why, that's my old car. No, you don't have to sell it to land. Oh, you. Bobby, what's this all about? I, uh, tried to talk the kid out of it, Barnes, but he insisted on buying your car back. You used your college money. Yeah. But all you have to do is win the big race, and then you can give it back to me. And we'll have enough left over to buy a new school bus. Suppose I don't win. You can't lose, Burnham Up. You just gotta win. Attention, folks. I want you to meet the drivers who are going to race in the great automobile sweepstakes. In number one position, we have a national champion, Ray Ridpan, car number seven. In the number two position, that consistent point winner, Tom Chase, car number 33. And here is a surprise, folks. A last minute entry, the ex-king of the dirt track trying to stage a comeback. Burnham Up Barnes, who will have the outside position, car number 18. Why did Drummond let Barnes get in the race? He couldn't keep him out of it without arousing suspicion. It's going to be tough to beat. Listen, fella, it ain't a case of Barnes winning or losing. It's up to us to see he doesn't even finish. That's Drummond's orders.
Yes. nearly a whole lap on account of that bad wheel. Oh, Grande Dio, he'll never be able to catch him up now. Fifty laps to go. He still has a chance. Colonel McBarnes is driving like a wild man. He's made up the lap he lost and he's still gaining. There he goes, he's pulling his hard. and burn him up again. 